Welcome to The Point with Mick Rich. Today, Ethel Mahard, Mahard is our guest, and she is the Executive Director for Right to Life Committee of New Mexico. We're excited to have you on board, Ethel. Ethel and I first met at a uh, campaign rally there in Cuba. We were meeting at the Cuban Cafe. Yeah. First time you and I chatted, I had heard about you. You know, boy, the, your reputation <laughs> preceded you, and it's all good. But Ethel, I'd like a few minutes of your time to here today to talk about your organization. I want to start with, what is your organization? What do you do? What's your... Well, I'm, uh, I'm the executive director of the Right to Life Committee of New Mexico. And what we do is we champion the cause of life from conception to natural death. We fight against abortion, infanticide, uh, assisted suicide, and euthanasia. Good. So, and you get that message out why it's important. Yes, absolutely. So why is it important? Well, it's, it's a big stain on our state. I mean, and uh, the, the thing is, is that we have had abortion here in our state for decades here, and it is up to the day of delivery. And most people don't even know that. And when I began to tell people, they would just deny it. And so we have, our, our purpose is to educate the public and let them know what is going on in our backyard, in our state. And so we, we fight that battle every single day. So every Ethel, day. I was at, this was in 18. Mm -hmm. I'm at the state fair. I'm walking around, shaking hands, talking to people. I ran across two ladies that were, uh, they were Navajo, a grandmother and a, mm -hmm. and, uh, and a mother. And I'm chatting with them and I mentioned about my my opponent was supporting abortion up to the point of delivery. And she said, oh no, that can't be the case. I said, oh yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And then I said, they do it right here in Albuquerque. And they do it, I said, they do it right here in New Mexico. And the, the grandmother turned to the, to the to the daughter and and said uh, they don't do it where we're from and they said that's right they do it right here so here it is and they were and I noticed they were wearing I said are you Catholic she said yes uh -huh. and I said so am I and and we're chatting but she had no recollection that this is what's going on you could tell that they were against it mm -hmm. that they don't believe in that I'll, that that goes against their beliefs. So how do you get there? So I'm talking to them, and I'm talking about the life issues, and they have no idea. So how do you, how the message isn't getting out there mm -hmm. because the, the our political leaders here in the state keep pushing it more and more and more. Mm -hmm. So how do you, how are you? What are you going to do different this this year, next year, moving forward? So when I go out and talk to people, they can either say, "Yeah, I know that, and I'm okay with it," mm -hmm. or say, "You know, I I know that, and I'm against it, and I'm not supporting candidates that believe that way." What are you going to do differently? Well, we are just talking to everybody, Nick. And uh, I go back, and we don't want to just rest on our uh, past victories, but uh, in 2019, when uh, the bill HB 51 came up in, in the, the session, for, in, first in the House and then went to the Senate, the best thing that ever happened to us was really New York, New York and Virginia. When they lit up the sky and they said, we are going to have abortion here for the day of delivery, people in New Mexico were incensed about it. Well, we're like, why are you angry at them? We've been doing this here forever. And they're going, no way. And so we said, yes way. Yeah. And so we began to just let people know that this was happening here in our backyard. And people just immediately rose up. We said that they've been asleep for a really long time, but we welcomed them. Right. So no. So we began to sound the alarm. We got people, we rallied people throughout the state. They came from everywhere for rallies. To, to protest against this. So when we're looking at our state, mm -hmm. we talk about it, we leave people from around the company come to New Mexico for their right. late-term yes, abortions. they do, they do. So, and I believe, I can't remember where I was, but one of the candidates talked about 70% of the Mexico voters are against late-term abortion. Oh, it's more than that. So what percentage? 
It, well, let me let me give you this percentage. The governor during that entire process right. asked for the New Mexicans to call on in and see how they felt against about abortion. Well, in that period of time, and I like to use this portion because it was actual evidence, and I got it. I made the request, and there were over ten thousand calls that came in in a two week period, and in that two week period, over, and I would say over ninety eight percent of those calls said no way. Okay, so nuts. I I get that. Mm -hmm. So, but we're gonna say we'll, we'll go with the conservative number seventy right, percent. Right, right. So. The question is, if 70% of the voters in New Mexico are against it, mm -hmm. how do you get those 70% to understand that's happening in our state and contact their representatives? Mm -hmm. How do you reach out to those and say, you know, and, and again, we go back and look at the yeah. late term abortion. Right. So are you saying the only thing on the table is from conception to natural death? Right. Or are you saying is that we want our legislators, our governor on board to end late term abortions? At with least. A, at least. So how do you how are you getting that out there? Well are you getting it yes, out there? Yes, we are. And thankfully I'm not the only one. And uh, I am happy to let everybody know that this year, in this election, we have hundred and one brand new candidates that stepped up. And they said, we're going to run, and they're not politicians, they're housewives, they're business people, they're all walks of life, teachers, and they are proudly pro-life. I've met with lots of them. I've been going throughout the state speaking with them. They're not ashamed. They're not afraid. They go out there and talk about it. That's the issue that they ran on. That, And then some, it is like the top issue, maybe not the only issue. So we have politicians that are, not politicians, candidates that are out there running. They're t knocking on doors, talking to people. And they are changing minds and they're changing hearts. And so I'll, I'll tell you this, the statistic on this. I just okay. met with the attorney that is, um, he has a production called Abortion on Trial. And he told me, he says, 81% of New Mexicans are against late-term abortion. And that includes those that are pro-choice because believe it or not, people that, are, that call themselves pro-choice are against late-term abortion. That's correct. And I, and I agree with that. Mm -hmm. So... What I thought was interesting, I don't know if you remember the movie, the, uh, what was it, the Green Line with the over, uh, uh, the death penalty? Mm -hmm. And they talked, in that movie was about the psychological impact to those individuals that carry out the death penalty. Mm -hmm. And I thought at the time, it's an interesting thought yeah. is, the people that perform abortions have that same soul-crushing experience mm -hmm. that those involved in the death penalty. But the only difference between the death penalty is that those individuals that have the death penalty actually went before they had a uh, trial, went before you know, peers of their community, mm -hmm. and and had a judge in your, on their actions. But for abortion, there is no trial. Right. There mm -hmm. is no, you're just gone. Right. So those are the things that I see. So I think it's, I think you're right. I, I think the candidates getting out there. Absolutely. And it's, and these are candidates that aren't politicians. Right. We're talking candidates. <laughs> these are what I like to call lay people. Right. Moms, right? dads. That are right. Moms, dads that are out there. Uh, talking to people mm -hmm. about the importance. When I was on the campaign trail, yeah. one of the things that I I, I did was uh, when I was, especially at the state fair, was I, at any of the fairs, mm -hmm. when I saw a young family, I would talk about the right to life mm -hmm. issues. Because when you're, you've got a stroller and you've got a little baby, they understand what what a baby is. They understand what an infant is. They understand what that is about, what life is about. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that I talk about. So those are what I see, those issues I think you're doing. Your organization's doing great work. It's out there. Uh, excited about what you're doing yeah, in your organization. It's always good to see you okay. and to have you here. We're going to bring this, this segment to a close. It's exciting. We're going to move on to the next part. But again, Ethel, Good having you here talk about your organization. Thank you.
middle of the field in some room, a move at the 20 and all the way, touchdown. Cleveland tonight sputtered at times, but neat. when they got it going, they got it going just like right there. To the five, touchdown Cleveland. Down and 10 here. Play action, looking, throws it out deep, has a man out there, ball is caught. To the 10, to the house, and just like that, the Cleveland Storm answer. and that is dangerous it's by everyone and then it's headed in and so a miss clearance they're gonna give it there goes thompson trying to turn the corner and does thompson at the 15 10 5 waiting for the call touchdown mayfield trojans Robertson will push it to Hobart on the far side. Tipped over the double block. Pan kicked off the floor beautifully by Gonzalez Sanchez, and we're still going. Here's Hobart. She'll go over the double block. Lucero. Jones will set it. Tough set. Lucero will have to get it over. Robertson. She'll push it over the block. Save. The left handed save there by Lucero. Here's Jones. She'll have a swing. Yes. McIntosh. Excuse me, at the front. Stepping up in the pocket and moving and now to the five and diving towards the end zone and in. Hobart. Jones. She'll set Mac for the championship. Yes. is the city's best yet again. Shot out of a cannon, Ivan Rodriguez. He's got all the speed. Can he break away inside the 10 and to the 5? And in. Touchdown. Well, I'm going to the frontier, walk up to the cashier, order up a root beer and a number one. Cover it with green stuff, one scoop is not enough. Find a booth is real tough, back by the Duke. Meet my family, meet my friends in the quirkiest restaurant I have ever been. All of Albuquerque's favorite spot, it's the Frontier Restaurant. The Frontier Restaurant is a proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Welcome back. I'm here with Ethel. We're talking about Ethel's organization. Well, not your organization, <laughs> but you're the executive director mm -hmm. of Right to Life Committee of New Mexico. And we've been talking about just the sanctity of life in those issues, how to get the message out but also how do we get the people in New Mexico, the Mexicans, to get their, their concerns addressed in Santa Fe in Congress about where they believe about the sanctity of life. And, and I wanna talk a little bit, last night, I wanna talk about Roe v. Wade. Mm -hmm. Last night, I thought it was interesting, Joe mm -hmm. Biden got up there and said, Roe v. Wade is on the ballot, mm -hmm. but in reality, Nowhere on the ballot are we, you, I, or anybody is going to go 
into the, the voting booth or fill out an applicant, you know, vote, filling out a ballot and say, where's Roe v. Wade? It's not on there, right? right? But we talk about, all we've heard about since Roe v. Wade, the Roe v. Wade is on the ballot mm -hmm. and they want to reverse it, they want to turn it over, they want to do, and we're going to fill in the blanks. They're worried about it. Right, they're worried about it. Mm -hmm. But again, I want to make it clear is that Roe v. Wade is a rally call mm -hmm. for the left and the right. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's a great way to stir up the base. But what we're talking about is it, it takes out the sanctity of life out of the message. Mm -hmm that we need to get back to that message is about the sanctity of life. So how do you just go from the rallying cry to the sanctity of life? How do you get voters to understand that, especially when we look at Roe v. Wade, what, what, was, what was the impact in our country for Roe v. Wade? What do, what do you think when you think about Roe v. Wade, what's the impact that it had on our country? Oh, it's had tremendous impact. And it, you know, um, and, I, and that's why I've been talking to potential legislators as, as we were doing the endorsement recommendations. And uh, this is the other side of it, and that's the sister suicide and, and euthanasia. And they said, Roe v. Wade was, uh, first of all, people don't know this part. Roe v. Wade is, was a law passed because of a lie because uh, Linda Coffey and Sarah Weddington got Norma McCorvey to lie on the stand saying that she had been brutally raped. Well, it wasn't true. Yet that law came into being because of a lie uh, from her, all right? So, but abortion was supposed to be legal, safe, and rare, all right? Well, it is legal, hardly safe, and hardly rare when you have over 64 million children gone because of it it is not rare same thing happened like on assisted suicide i tell them don't don't crack that door open because when they did that with roe versus wade it was supposed to be small right so well, but if we go back and talk about roe v wade mm -hmm. that really was a court decision not legislation right right we're talking about court decisions mm -hmm. right? Was... right not legislation right so what we're talking about so when we talk about roe v wade today mm -hmm. And we're looking at what's happening here at the Supreme Court coming up. We'll mm -hmm. talk about it a little bit later. But what we're talking about here is Roe v. Wade is a court decision. Right. What you're talking about is addressing it, addressing abortion, addressing, and I want to make it clear what we're talking about here is the sanctity of life and addressing it on a legislative basis. Mm -hmm. The fact is that that we we consider the unborn precious. Right. And the question comes up is, you know, who had, whose voice is it, right? I can, we did a job one time and it had to do with, uh, I'm not going to get into details, but I can remember I had the individual come down from the state this a long time ago, addressing, uh, exhuming some remains mm -hmm. in the church. And so they can they came down that person from the state said, I speak for those who no longer have a voice. Oh. But the priest said, I'm here, is the steward of the parish's money and on how to address exhuming these, these remains. And we worked, I was able to work out an agreement between the two. So we addressed the remains, addressed the kept the cost in line, and pull it all together. But I'm thinking at the time, this person from the state was saying, I speak for those who longer have a mm -hmm, voice, mm -hmm. but we don't even, we give a voice to the dead, right. but we don't give a voice to the living. Mm -hmm, exactly. So how do you get that message out? How do we talk about the unintended consequences when we think well, about the people getting to the point and saying it's not a life, the human life isn't precious. We talk about the end of life, it's not precious. Right. We're going to end it. And then you and I, I think a year ago, had this conversation that in the Netherlands, yes. they have assisted suicide 
in medically assisted suicide. We're going through the stats and it was unreal to me. And then the one that just caught me by surprise was it was assisted suicide with the patient not in agreement. Right. And I, and you and I talked about it. I said, anywhere else, I think that's considered murder. homicide. Yeah, yeah. Murder. Right. Yeah. So we look at it as, have we cheapened life? We absolutely have. We absolutely have. And, uh, you know, you look at everything around, and, uh, you know, having lunch with a friend yesterday, Tom, I can point everything back to abortion. Really, all, all the social ills that we have right now. Such today, as. Such as. All right. Rioting in the streets. Mick. I mean, I, that baby in the womb is worth nothing to us. So neither is your property. You are nothing to me. Why should I value you or your property? So I can riot. I can go take everything that's yours because you're, you're nothing. All right. I can go shoot you dead and not worry about it because you're nothing. You see, you see the whole, I, I see the whole gamut of how it has affected our society. And then the symptoms of abortion actually have another impact. It, one of them it, uh, to bring to, to bear here is the one where uh, there is an over 80% tendency toward rage in a woman and the man, because that also affects the man who has been affected by abortion. So you figure you have all these people because one in four women has had an abortion, one in four men, right? You see, Every fourth person is totally ticked off. You don't think that we have some anger issues in our culture? Absolutely, we do. Unresolved, because they can be, re- right? It also has an, uh, 56%. When they begin, uh, when they have an abortion, they either begin or, or increase drug abuse. Over 56% of the population, when they experience abortion, begin or increase drug abuse, all right? When you actually also, it also adds to suicide, right? We are already number one, this state, we are number one in suicide. Our teens double the suicide rate of the entire nation. So when you introduce sex is what they do. That's what Planned Parenthood does. They, they just keep pushing, pushing, pushing. But what it does is it affects a child in such a way that they either increase drug abuse and suicide. So they have a tendency toward that. And of course, are people people will tell me you're just a one issue person i'm like well maybe i said but let's talk about the (laughs) let's talk about the economic impact of what abortion has had i said you figure we have wiped out really an entire country 65 million people 64 million people right i did some research and taxes and how much each person would have paid over these years and everything else do you realize that that equals to 14 trillion dollars that we have lost in our country, all right, taxpayers. So you think, okay, well, people say, well, maybe the religious aspect is people don't want to go there sometimes. Right. But we have this whole gamut Ooh, that it's affected the think violence. That it is a psychological wound. Yes. A spiritual wound. Absolutely. That is difficult to heal. I had a conversation here yesterday talking about unintended consequences. And one of them that I thought about was fatherhood. Mm. What a, what this has done is it's taken away the responsibility of men, father and children. Absolutely. That they can say, well, it's, it's your decision. Yeah. It's your right to life. I'm not responsible. So then all of a sudden it's your, your decision. And then it's then I'm not responsible. And when we think our country was founded on, uh, no taxation without representation. Mm-hmm. Well, the flip side of that is if we don't charge taxes, you don't get a say in the government. That's what Saudi Arabia is about. Mm-hmm. They don't pay taxes because they've got so much oil money. Mm-hmm. So they have no say in their government. But what we're saying here too is that men, fathers no, have no longer say in what happens but they here do. In, the, in life, right? And so we've taken that away. They just say, oh, well. I went back and I, I, last night I looked it up. Will Chamberlain, you know who he mm-hmm. is? Yes. Do you know how many men, how many women he said he had sex with? 20,000. Oh, my gosh. Uh, there are other sports athletes, other athletes, uh, actors that are in thousands. Well, 
there's no responsibility there. It's just, exactly. and this is what we talk about is we have fatherless families that mm -hmm. are out there. And if we want fathers involved in family, it starts before the baby is born. Absolutely. And you know what, Nick? I just want to say that fathers have more impact than they actually uh, realize because 80% of women that have an abortion is because he pressured her. And so, and, and let me ask you this question. Whenever she gets pregnant, who does she go to first? Well, that's wrong. The, the man, the, the dad. And she really wants for him to say, I'm going to be with you. Let's, let's do this together, right? But what I believe is we, for, we fail to protect or, or to honor the sanctity of life. What happens is we wiped out responsibility, which you're talking right. about. You know, so we say, you know what? If your marriage, if, if it's going tough, get a divorce. Oh, that's you know, if, just, and I agree with you. And we, we, wipe that out of it. I believe that we're going to turn the corner. We the are. Race. We are. And I see that, Ethel. It's exciting. We're going to wrap it up this session. So, Ethel, again, great conversation. Thank you. Thank you. at the 25-yard line. That's just a great catch by number one, Drake Owen. Single running back, and West does get the ball, and he has wide open lane. Let's see if he can make it. He punches it in. Did he? Did they get it? Yes! Touchdown, Ben West. Ball off, nice hole for a nice run. He breaks one, breaks it, touchdown! Second down, Smith. Plenty of time, a little pump fake. Fires in, he's going for Connor O'Toole to the end zone. Out of the play, fake throws it out to Colson on the screen. Colson breaks the tackle, 20, you might be going to the house. Touchdown, Mustangs! Third down and 16. Redford's gonna throw it, throws it out. The receiver slip. The ball is picked, and back to the north side we go. And this could go all the way back for a touchdown and into the end zone. Far side for Bell. She couldn't put it away. Sharp over the block. Salas. Ray. Put it over by Cheshire. Sharp again through the block. We're going to set Bell on the far side. Gonzalez Sanchez digs it out. Jones will push it to Sharp. That's been her spot, but they're scrambling and still alive. Now it's going to come over. Salas gets it there. Jones. Gonzalez Sanchez, Sharp will have another swing. Just barely able to get it back over. Great defense for Pius. They'll try Wallace on the other side. Yes! Oh man, this beat is crazy. Play fake. Throws. Oh, what a catch by Reggie Colson. Boy, he got whacked and still came down with it. And off goes right side. Breaking some tackles and more. Off to the races. Still on his feet into the end zone. What a... Middle of the field. It's one of the most impressive things you will ever see. Here's a quick slant. And look at the speed by Altier. Can anybody catch him? A foot race. Altier. Oh, what an answer. Don't sacrifice quality of flavor when you're in a hurry. Golden Pride offers ribs, fried chicken, green and red chili breakfast burritos, and Frontier Cinnabons. Four great locations or visit us online 
at Golden Pride at abq.com. Golden Pride Barbecue Chicken and Ribs, proud supporter of Provia Sports Network. The New Mexico High School Coaches Association, established in 1941, is an organization of New Mexico's best and most professional interscholastic coaches. Coaches across work daily to help our student athletes excel in the classroom, on the field of play, and in our communities. Students that participate in interscholastic activities attain higher grades, higher graduation rates, and higher wages. Responsible for the North-South All-Star Games, statewide coaches award program, and providing multiple professional development opportunities for New Mexico's coaches. Be a great coach by coaching beyond the game. I'm Mick Rich and welcome back and I'm here today with Ethel. So wanted to talk a little bit today, Ethel, this segment on the Supreme Court nomination of Judge Amy Coney Barrett. Yes. People are looking at this one. They're saying what's going on. Yeah. Again, last night during the presidential debates, they discussed about, uh, as Joe Biden said, it's about Roe v. Wade talking about and then also the Affordable Care Act. But what we're talking about here is a Supreme Court justice. It's not about one rule. It's not about one one case. And again, we talked about Roe v. Wade. That is not legislation. It is a a ruling by the courts. And and I hate to say it, but I've I've got a, I think I've got one or two out there, Mick Ridge for somebody. Right, you know, that just comes with the territory as a contractor. But again, when we look at this, uh, do you support uh, Judge Amy you know, Coney Barrett? Oh, absolutely. And why? Uh, well, she she's um, she's for life for one, right. and um, uh, and then she's she's a she's a woman. She's got children. She's a you know she supports adoption. She that's obvious right there. She's a woman of faith. And she supports our constitution, and that's so important. We don't need uh, judges legislating; they need to read what the law is and abide by that. And, and she's a strict constitutionalist, and I think that she's going to do a really good job. And so I, I think she's a perfect candidate. And she didn't just come out of the woodwork; she's been on there. She's been on waiting in the wings for a while. So I think I think that she's a, a wonderful choice. I think she she's a mom. She understands. She's a family person. You know, loved her husband. You know dearly so i think that she's a perfect candidate i i agree with you i'm excited to see mm-hmm. I, I i keep saying excited because i am yeah We're, we are here seeing a change in direction yes. of the country and it's not just about what the president is doing it's about what the people are doing how they're looking at things mm-hmm. uh, i do look at her i do look at the fact is that she's saying I'm going to rule on the Constitution. I'm not going to make law from the bench. This is, we need to hold our legislators, our members of Congress accountable for passing laws. Yes. Not count on the courts to make decisions. This is what elections are about. It is. And, and this is so important to me. I think so too. And, and, and it's very telling, very telling that Joe Biden would say that uh, this is uh, about Roe v. Wade. It, you're absolutely right. When uh, uh, the late Justice Ginsburg passed away, I was online and immediately you see Planned Parenthood begging for money and they said, please protect Roe, please protect. They are freaking out and with good reason. Yeah. And uh, I can't wait, frankly, because they know that, that we get this justice in, they are headed to the trash heap where I think that they belong. I mean, Roe versus Wade does. All right, it's so, just but again, a... but let's just talk about Roe v. Wade mm-hmm. in the courts. If Roe v. Wade is overruled, mm-hmm. it doesn't end abortion immediately. Not immediately, no. But but it doesn't end abortion. It doesn't end abortion. It doesn't end abortion. abortion. What it means is it goes back to the people to decide, not to the courts. Right. This is what our country is about. And there it's isn't not... a billion dollar corporation pushing for death. That's the other thing. Planned Parenthood is a billion dollar corporation that is funded by yours and my tax dollars and they keep begging and asking everybody else for donations so that they can promote death in our culture. And so when that happens, it's like, you know what? You and I no longer have to pay for that corporation to be in business to promote something that you and I abhor and of course, Scott. So so let's talk about this. Let's say, for instance, it does 
what I just mentioned was that Roe v. Wade doesn't end abortion. Right. What it does is it puts it back to the states and it, the state's legislatures. Right. And for the people to decide how they want their laws made, not for the courts, because the courts are the ones. And, again, and I go back and I look at, when we look at Roe v. Wade, the courts jump in when the leg state legislators are working through this issue, mm -hmm. the abortion issue. What do we do? How do we handle it? How far? Late term, not late term. If we go back to Roe v. Wade, I'm thinking that a premature baby was probably just a couple of weeks old. Mm -hmm. I mean, a couple of weeks before term. Right. Today, we're talking about what, what is that? What is the week when we say a baby is viable outside the world? Well, they've been known to survive, believe it or not, as early as 19 weeks. That's right? correct. They and have. So, I mean, um, we had, I've had two babies in my family. My two grand, the two youngest grandbabies were early. The one was early? Uh, two months early. Uh, one was 32 weeks and one was 30, 35, 35 right. weeks. And so we knew a couple that was, first was a miscarriage, the mm -hmm. second baby, you know, second pregnancy. There were some challenges, some risks. Mm -hmm. There they were. And I can remember they were like, okay, we're at 18 weeks, 16 weeks. Now we're 18 weeks, we're 20 weeks. Okay. Then we're moving forward. Right. And then it's a 20, 21, 22, then getting to 30, yes, yes. 32, and then you say, okay, we're past. <laughs> we're past, we're, yeah. We're, 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 guys, they I were know, so excited yeah. when they called up and said, here's where we're yeah. at. Now, if it gets back to the legislature, where it really belongs for the people to make the decision, not, not the courts, if this is the problem, the courts have been rule making legislation from the bench mm -hmm. so we get back to the people right so it's back to santa fe yes so where does it sit in santa fe for abortion well on the the mexico books what does it mean right now we have a 1969 law that says that if an abortion was to take place it would be in a hospital by a doctor and it would be for the life of the mother or for insist or rape that's it that's what it reads yeah, that's it and so, but so it, it has doesn't, to be a, right? But it doesn't outlaw outlaw abortion. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. But uh, I'll tell you, the people in New Mexico are they're hot under the collar about this issue, and they don't want abortion. I just know. I talk to so many, you know, all over the place, and we don't. You know, it's like this. Like when we when we say it's okay, guess what? You know, it becomes okay. That's and right. so, so all of a sudden, we give people permission to do just that. When we say it is not okay, that's not what we do here. We're like, okay. So, but what this is going to do is it is going to force our legislators, our legislators and legislators across the country, not to pass the ball to the courts, right? To pick it up and decide what the people want. Mm -hmm. This, this is how our country. This is how why our country was founded. It never was founded on, and we're going to have 12 individuals in court ruling how to decide that you or I live our lives. Right. It gets back to the legislatures. It gets back to the people deciding what they want, not the special interests. We get to decide. Right. We that, do. to me, is huge. It, it is huge, and that's why I'm excited about her, because she's about the Constitution about our constitutional rights and the, so I think it's wonderful. So one thing I want to bring up when we talk about the courts okay, and it's just kind of change direction completely change direction but when we think back about the founding of our country when we talk about slavery and when we're talking about founding our country how, how do we bring these 13 colonies together mm -hmm. with very different uh, focus. For instance, the north it was more industrial, but the south more agrarian. Mm -hmm. uh, the north was against slavery, the south was for slavery. They came to a compromise. Then that compromise was taken before the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court supported slavery. It wasn't until that great Republican 
Abraham Lincoln yeah. stepping up and saying slavery is going to end. Wow. He gave his life for it. Yes, he did. And I think we can't forget that Abraham Lincoln, I'm a Republican, so I just say, that's my <laughs> guy, right? He's my <laughs> guy. But he gave his life yes, he to end slavery. Mm -hmm. Like hundreds of thousands of Americans gave their life to be saved. Mm -hmm. And we need to remember that the Supreme Court signed off on that. Yes. And we need to remember that we can't count on the courts. Right. The other item I just want to share with you that at the same time things are getting thrown out there on the filibuster, getting rid of the filibuster, mm -hmm. and what the filibuster has done and does, it keeps that the tyranny of the majority in the Senate mm -hmm. doesn't know rough shot over the mind. Mm -hmm. It keeps a check and balance. And that's at risk as well. And we need to remember that when we go forward in this next election and we decide who we're going to vote for yes. for the Senate, for the President, all the way down. Mm -hmm. Is that these individuals are representing us. Yeah. yeah. So, and they're giving their life, if you think about it. Look at our President. Oh. He doesn't even take a paycheck. I mean, the thing is, they're giving their lives for us. You know, so even I, those here, that are out there running, but, you know. So here's one thing I, <laughs> yeah. I, I thought it was interesting. I can feel for this is that President Trump, Trump, as you just mentioned, he's given up his paycheck. Yeah. But guess what else he's done? His businesses have taken a huge hit yeah. because of his business. His daughter's businesses have taken a huge hit. Yeah. When I ran for Senate, my business took it. Of course. And I understand, and look, and I do that, too. right, and I said, I do that willingly because I care about our state. Yeah. That's why I'm doing this program. Yeah. I'm excited to have you on board. Again, I keep saying excited because I am. Yes. So, Ethel, we're going to bring this segment to a close. Again, thank you very much. Thank you for having some of those yards right there, right up the middle, and he's looking at an easy run, one man to beat, beats him for the touchdown. 45 yard touchdown by Ortiz. First down and goal from the 10, play action and a fade to the end zone, and well there he is. Let's see if the Mustangs can scoop and score. Scoop and score the touchdown with Western New Mexico. Number 20, CJ Bionis. Battle of the play fake. Throwing to Colson in the end zone. Touchdown. Ah, touchdown. The hot man, and why not? Looking hot, looking into the end zone, and his second touchdown already. Pulls, headed in, and that's 2 0. And I think it's Johnson, and it is. So third down and goal, and it's a keeper for Smith. He broke a tackle, and he's into the end. Oh, Lee Rumble, hit by Calhoun. Ball is fumbled. Head is one, look out, Garcia's loose. Garcia to goal for the lead, one nothing! Go play action, rolling out to the right. Now he's gonna run with it and break some tackles, lowers his head into the end zone. What a run by Isaiah Chavez, wow.
Car Crafters, proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Are you sure we're supposed to be doing this? Don't worry, I've watched him do it a thousand times. Come on, what's the worst that can happen? No, bad dog. Hi, welcome to Car Crafters. What happened? Don't worry, we'll make it like it never happened. Car Crafters, it's like it never happened. Jackson Compaction wants to help you keep your green and keep the community green as well jackson compaction has worked hard to maintain the same prices since day one always easy and painless trash removal with professional crews and quality service if it's non-hazardous waste debris or trash on your land leave it to us at jackson compaction we're dedicated to ensuring the conservation of our environment you trash it we smash it jackson compaction we've earned a reputation for great results Turbo Threads is a proud sponsor of ProView Networks. Almost 30 years of experience means fast service, great prices, and a wide selection of apparel from t-shirts to performance sports shirts, even jackets and hats. They feature low minimums and no setup charges on most orders. Turbo Threads is located at 1503 Golf Course Road in Rio Rancho, or find them on Facebook, online at TurboThreads.com, or call 999-1234 for Turbo Threads. Welcome back. I'm Mick Rich, and we have Ethel here today as our guest. And Ethel is the executive director for Right to Life Committee of New Mexico. We've been talking about just her or this organization. We've talked about Roe v. Wade. The fact is that it isn't on the ballot. No matter what Republicans, Democrats, Libertarians say, Roe v. Wade isn't on the ballot. But what we need to think about is the sanctity of life. And then lastly, the Supreme Court nomination coming up for Judge Amy Coney Barrett. So we're gonna wrap it up. I wanna ask you, Ethel, is, here it is, this organization that you're in. It's not about making, it's not about dollars and cents. No. No. It's about changing lives, no. saving lives. So when it's all said and done, and you're gonna meet your maker, yeah. and you're gonna say, Peter up there. Peter, hey, this is what I did. Mm -hmm. What does success look like for you, for your organization? Oh, for my organization, it's like, <clears throat> just thinking about what you said, like on the spiritual aspect is nothing you can, uh, there's nothing more that you can hear that would be the best thing to hear your Heavenly Father say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You know, um, I work <clears throat> a lot. We just work and we just do everything that we can. Success for us will see an end to abortion. Really, it will. And that we will never even darken the doors of the uh, assisted suicide in our state. That's not who we are, we are, Nick. You know, they're trying to make New Mexico be California or New York or somewhere else. We're New Mexicans. And I testified to this at an assisted suicide uh, event. And I said, in New Mexico, we take care of our moms and dads and our children. And we take care of everybody. And if they have, uh, if they have a deformity, if you will, or a disability, we don't just toss them aside. They're part of society and we love them. You know, that's who we are. We take care of our own. And, you know, I am just so excited about our candidates because they're out there walking the walk and talking the talk. And I can't wait to get them in office. And I really, really believe we have an opportunity to do just that because they are doing what everybody else should have a long time ago. And they're not shying away from the life issue, the faith issue, the family issue. All these things are important. And to me, I think that when we finish at the end of it and we have done away with abortion in our state, to me, that would be success. Because like I said, when we give permission for the little bit, we give permission to the lot. And I want it to just to, to end because it's not acceptable. It's life and the only one that has that right is God, not us. And I just don't remember that they gave us that title just yet. So <laughs> we have to stick to what it is we're supposed to do. And so I, I, I can't wait. I really can't wait for the day that a bill is signed in this state that says no more, no more. It is a dark stain on our state. It's affected us even to the point of economically and whether they believe it or not, I believe 
that it has impacted us in such a way that we are at the top of every bad list, at the bottom of every good list, and I can't wait till that flips over. Would could success be <clears throat> just in late term abortions on your watch? Um, it's not good enough for me, but but uh, but. I would like for it, yes, at, at least, I say at least, you know, in 2013 we tried to pass a ban uh, past 20 weeks, so that would have been late term, and we were like, okay, we would take at least that. So I would like to see, yes, at least that we would end late term abortion, absolutely. So. Do you see any give from the other side? Oh, well, you know, they're fighting and they're spending millions. I have an endorsement list. In fact, if people want that, they could contact us. They could go to our website. Where do they go? They go to, uh, and I'll say, they go to rtlnm.org, or they can call us at 505-881-4563, and we will see to it that you get one. When you go to our website, you can just download it and print it, and I'm telling everybody, just hand it out like candy. And so what I say is, uh, if when you look at the endorsement sheet, it's got bold black for all those that we've endorsed or recommended. And then we, of course, call out those that are uh, endorsed right. by Planned Parenthood. Say, so if you just stick to bold black, we'll turn this state around. And I promise you, <laughs> because right. it's got every single representative and Senate race in the entire state. So if you wanna know who is representing you or not, right. just look at our sheet and we'll tell you. If you don't know, we'll just call us. Well, help you. And, and, and then I, we talk about the beginning of life, mm -hmm. and we have so far, but at the end of life, what's the, what does success look like for the end of life? Well, success looks at, you know what, let's take responsibility for our, for our families. You know, our moms and dads were there for us when we needed them. Let's take care of them. You know, there's a, I, there's a billboard, I just posted something that says, compassionate choices. They make it sound so wonderful and options for end of life. You know, at the end of life, you know what, it's, it's about giving you a choice to kill yourself, all right? So compassion actually means to walk alongside. Well, it is not compassionate for me to give you a drug that you die so That's that right. I don't have to deal with you. You know, we have lost the sense of responsibility. If you're a pain in my side, then I'm gonna just get rid of you. If you're an inconvenience for me to have a baby, I'm gonna get rid of you. If, if life doesn't work, it, you know, if the job doesn't work, I'm gonna quit. If I don't like school, I'm gonna quit. If I get pregnant, I'm gonna have an abortion. If my marriage isn't working, I'm gonna divorce it. If, if, if. And so we have got to take responsibility for ourselves and, and teach it to our children. We have lost that. You know what? And if I want something in your business, I'm gonna go take it. I don't think so. Well, I, I gotta say that, I, <laughs> Is a business owner of a construction company? I've had trucks stolen. Oh yeah. We just had construction tra a couple of construction trailers stolen. We've had break-ins, assortment of things, yeah. and and I understand what you're saying. Hey, you got it. I want it. I'll take it. That's right. And it's not about. It's not about that. It's about personal responsibility on a. Uh, so, I th when we talk, and we haven't talked much about the end of life here, so we want to want to wrap yeah. at the end of the program. Talk yeah. about the end of life issues. Yeah. But you and I chatted about what mm -hmm. went on and goes on in the Netherlands. Yes. It, on that it, and, in uh, Oregon, Oregon oh. has right has the right to die. All right. So they have assisted suicide there. But I want to tell you, they did just like abortion. They cracked that door open. Now their suicide rate has gone to over forty percent. And if we look in it, I think when I, I didn't look it up here last night, but I remember from our last time we did a program together was 40% of the deaths in the Netherlands had to do with assisted That's suicide. Right. And, and I can remember, so I shared this story with you before. I'm going to mm -hmm. share it with, with our viewers, is that there was two men that were probably, I'm thinking, in their 40s. They were deaf. They were going blind, they were twins, and they were able to, to sit down with their parents and physician and say, well, we, we don't have any hearing. We're losing our sight. There's no point in our life. Oh. And the parent and everybody agreed to allow them to bring into their life. Now, I read, I was reading that, and I can remember when I took the Dale Carnegie course, yeah. 
And there was a short story about an author that was uh, gone to the post office and got his seventh rejection. And he said, what is the purpose of my life? What is the purpose of what I'm doing? And he's going back to his home and he got there and he's just thinking, life is life worth living. And he was greeted by this young gal that said, isn't it a wonderful day? Can you smell the flowers oh. and feel the wind on your cheek, on my cheeks? He talked about what a wonderful day it was, and he thought, he stopped, and he said, yes. And that young gal that was talking to him was Helen Keller. Wow. Oh. And he indeed <laughs> went on to submit for an eighth time, and it was accepted and okay. became a well-known, published, you know, novel, wow. author. And, and again, we all bring something to the we table. Do. I look at the Holocaust. It's not just about uh, the brutality of one group of people on another, but all that we lost as a culture, yeah. as a world, of what these people could be bringing into it. I look at all the benefits that Helen, Helen Keller has brought to our country, to into the world, to allow us to be more than the last one is. Uh, I do believe that suffering, there is a purpose to suffering. Yes, so. It's not just about taking a pill to get rid of a pain and ache, right. but that suffering does make you grateful. Uh, your thoughts on that? I, I totally agree. You know, most of the things that that I have excelled in are because I went through a whole lot of pain. <laughs> to well, that. Yeah. It's like, wow, you know, so, uh, yeah, I totally agree. You know, there is purpose in suffering. And, you know, uh, we weren't promised to have a rose garden, right? And so there is something to be said about going through some hard times. And I think that most people learn the most through their adversity. And so, but I think that people need, they need people to say, you know what? We love you. We you're we don't do that. Don't even think about that. You know how much how important you are to us. And I think that that's what we need to be. We need to have more cheerleaders instead of naysayers and say you're not so worth it. So as as we bring this to a close, Ethel, I, what I want to mention to you is that what I saw in you in your organization isn't just about ending abortion. Mm -hmm. It's about the love of the Mexicans. That's right in that you're out there and you look at, and I grew up in San Francisco area, the love, you know, yeah. the, the, the love of San Francisco during the peace movement. But really what we're talking about is the love of you, your organization, the people in New Mexico, and how huge a heart all of you have carrying that message out. I need to bring it to a close, Ethel. Thank you so thank much you. for coming here thank today. You. It's always a tough subject, but it's so important. Yeah. And again, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm Mick Rich, and thank you for tuning in today. And what a great session. Thank you very much, Ellen. I'm Mick Rich, to the point.